Turn the lights back on. Wow. Retro Electro Tech. When real audio ruled the world. world. Greetings once again, all you lovely Estrogenians and you wild and woolly testosteroneans. This is Retro Ernest with Retro Electro Tech. And on the bench here, I have the B&K AV5000 Series 2 multi channel amplifier. Whew, that's quite a mouthful indeed. And uh, in the previous video, video one, I mentioned a few things I wanted to get squared away before power up and testing. And that's exactly what I'm going to do now. So for those of you that are digging this kind of stuff, that are picking up what I'm putting down, let's roll. Okay, so again, first things first, I'm going to get these loosey-goosey uh, connectors um, removed from the power switch here and get them soldered straight on to solidify that connection. Okay, so gone are these loosey-goosey connectors from this power switch here. And we have our wires now soldered on to the terminals, nice and bomb-proof, with a couple layers of heat shrink tubing, so let's move on. Now I'm going to clean up some connection points that are readily accessible throughout this amp. I mentioned I would be doing that in the previous video, so anyways, for example, um, the circuit board here, you see there's um, eight points of contact which are used to mount this board securely in place to these large um, filter caps, these four filter caps, okay, via eight screws of course. And um, obviously that being the case, we want these uh, points of contact nice and clean before we mount it back in place. Now in the interest of time, I already did that, so we can move on. Okay, before uh, I move on to a little more contact cleaning, I wanted to demonstrate some quick testing of these filter caps. Um, here you can see this uh, 15,000 mic 75 volt cap with a minus 10 plus 75% tolerance, and all is fine both with a capacitance and ESR. Now this is being tested at 120 hertz, so um, that's that, and um, the remaining three caps read right about the same. So again, this is just a quick test that at least gives us a little bit of info on the general health of these caps, and um, a little bit of assurance too before power up. Okay, the last thing I'm going to do is quickly clean out these um, these connectors here uh, using this uh, you know fancy um, micro brush, this high tech micro brush uh, used to clean dilithium crystal sockets within warp drive propulsion systems. So anyways, um, let me uh, pull this connector apart and you can see here we have the sockets and the pins and let me just apply a little dabo contact cleaner without spraying it all over the place. So let me just, I don't want to exert too much pressure on the button there, just, just enough to get a few drops out. Yeah, there we go. All you need is just a tiny bit, and I'm just going to go through real quick. Um, and I'm only going to do this one just real quick on camera. The rest I'm going to do off camera in the interest of time. Plus, I'm going to spare you intergalactic uh, beings, the excitement of the process. And then here, here we have the, uh, the pins here. We'll just kind of work around them just real quick, you know. and Just clean around the pins. That way, if there's any surface oxidation or whatever, you know, you can just kind of achieve a, a better connection, better contact, obviously. And then, um, get some of these, um, <clears throat> some of these little uh, swabs here. And uh, just, again, real quick, just go through and wick up any, any excess in there as well as any uh, dirt or whatever the case that loosened up and I'll use you know several of these these things are as cheap as chips so I'll just go through and wick up any excess not a big deal and again it doesn't have to be bone dry just you know just get out the excess and any any dirt that you loosened up with the brush and, and that's about it good enough um, I'd be even quicker than that if I wasn't explaining my little process on camera, but and there you go. There's several more of these connectors. I'm just going to whiz through real quick, and then uh, next it's going to be the power up and signal injection, and we'll go from there. Okay, so as you saw in the signal generator, I've injected a one kilohertz tone uh, into the amp. Now there's five inputs, five outputs, obviously, and starting with um, Starting with um, input one and output one, I'm going to go through these um, 
inputs and outputs sequentially and see what we're showing on the uh, scope, okay? And let me go ahead and switch over to the, uh, to the scope. Okay, so there's our scope view, obviously, and um, I'm going to comb through the outputs of this amp sequentially. As mentioned, there are five of them, and I will be going through the um, input level potentiometers uh, sequentially as well, of course, and um, running through their ranges and looking for any um, noise on the scope, any artifact, anything that looks, uh, you know, bouncy, jittery, or erratic, or whatever the case. I know that the customer, once again, and I mentioned this before, indicated that there was a problem with the uh, level four pot. So um, I have, I'm going to be, um, of course, terminating the outputs into an eight ohm dummy load. And if, and I also have my um, little uh, mini amp here. Let me hold it up. I have that um, hooked up as well so that I can also um, hear uh, a representation of uh, you know the audio of course and hear you know just so I can hear any any you know snap crackle or pop you know that kind of stuff any uh, any noise static all that jazz so um, let's get to it I'm in um, uh, I'm hooked up to the uh, output one right now so let me uh, kick it on up and I just have a very low level signal going in right now. I have the volume on that little mini amp turned way down so I don't demolish the uh, little speaker there. And like I said, I just want to I just want to see what's going on in the noise department and see if there's a nice smooth transition through the range of uh, these pots. So here we go. That was that was me stopping there. Let me turn down that tone. Okay. So um, as you can see, everything looks nice and smooth there. And that's output uh, number one. I'll kick it up again. Run it, run this pot through its range. And again, I am terminating it into an 8 ohm dummy load. Okay, nice. Let me um, move on through. Okay, folks, here's um, output number two. Okay, nice and smooth. No crazy artifact, let's do it again. And off camera, I am going to go through these a little bit more, but um, I just want to show all of you, including the customer, right off the bat of what's going on when I run these pots through their ranges and monitor the outputs and all that jazz. So let's move on to uh, output number three. Okay, y'all, and here we have pot number three. Look at that. Woo! That's a poopy pot. Look at that. Okay, so that pot's going to need some need some looking into there, some attention. See what's going on. All right, let's move on. Okay, so here's um, pot number four, the one that the customer had a complaint about. So let's let's uh, comb through its range here. Yeah, 
some problems. But look at that. Oh, see that? And there's a dead spot. Right there. It's that dead spot. Boom. Back on. I'm I'm going down. It's all jittery. And then it it drops and hits that dead spot right there. We lose yep. So I'm all the way down. Coming up really slow and smooth. It's all jittery. We lose our signal there a bit. We, amplitude drops and then there's that dead spot. Keep going up. Bam. Yeah. I also hear a right there. I can hear a click. Yep. When our signal cuts out. I can hear a click in the pot. So yeah, there's a there's a physical defect in there. There's something obvious obviously wrong. So yeah, this number four pot is is kaput. Let me go ahead and Okay, so now for the last pot. Our last output, number five. And that is looking good, so far anyways. Do it a few more times here, just kind of run through the pots range. Let's do it again. Here we go. Okay, so there you have it. Just some down and dirty testing. Uh, no biggie. So we have an, an issue there with uh, number three and number four. Number three I'm going to pull and I'm going to uh, perform a multi-step um, cleaning on it, flush it out, you know, a couple times, two, three times, whatever, and um, re-lubricate it. And uh, I think that pot is um, just uh, really dirty. And um, pot number four is definitely defective at that point where um, the signal cuts out and we flatline um, you know there's a little click right there I can I can I can hear just a little click in there so um, that pot I am going to yank and replace and uh, after that I will do a final uh, test of this amp so otherwise I'm gonna get back to the customer um, let him know what's going on uh, shoot this video his way for those of you that uh, enjoyed following along with this, um, yeah, I appreciate it. Uh, stay tuned. There will be more. Okay? Take care. Once again, peace, love, rock and roll, and of course, vintage audio. This is a poor man's shoe production.